y'all welcome to another video if it's your first time stopping by my channel I'm Jeff Rowe and this is Jeff Rowe's fish keeping I'm really excited about today's video I've been meaning to get out here to a local guy that I know he has a koi fish pond out behind his house that's been set up for over 20 years and I'm gonna go over there today and take a look at his pond and I'm gonna take you guys along with me hopefully you guys enjoy all right guys we are here at one of my local guys um, rich has um, agreed to let me come out and take a look at his koi pond a while back i saw him post a, a picture on facebook and he had a little koi pond and i thought wow that thing looks mature and looks like it has been going for quite a while and uh, i reached out to him to ask him if i could come take a look at it and i did and um, I'm really glad that I did. It's not really the biggest in the world, but it is really mature. And I'm going to let Rich start taking over and talking about it while I pan around on the pond and stuff. And uh, we'll just uh, learn about what it takes um, to get things right. Because he's been through the whole thing and he's got it pretty much dialed in here. So what all do you got here, Rich? Okay, we've got a uh, small koi pond. Uh somewhere between 900 and 1,000 gallons and it's 32 inches deep which is not deep enough in Iowa uh, to keep the fish in so we bring them inside to a tank inside over the winter time and so what we have done is lined it to start with we started this uh, approximately 22 23 years ago wow 22 years right and we've learned a lot of things and we went different liners in it and found that most of them after a summer would leak and finally went to the regular pond liner and we doubled it up in certain critical areas where we figured things would, would penetrate and we've not had leakage since so we enjoy uh, minimal uh, only by evaporation filling up of the pond uh, we keep the water moving all the time right. we have two different pumps in here uh, the first pump is a 4,000 gallon per hour pump that runs the waterfall and within that waterfall there is similar to a five gallon bucket it's specifically made for waterfalls it's got uh, lava rock in there for filtration it comes up from the bottom comes up through the top filters again uh, for the larger particles and then falls out into the waterfall uh, the other pump is a smaller pump it's a 500 gph pump that runs our um, thing that uh, controls uh, the um, algae in here gotcha and it's another filter uh, like i was telling Earlier, uh, we oversize everything. We found that uh, whatever is recommended seemed to be too small and inadequate. And to success, we oversized everything. Uh, typically, they recommend a thousand GPH for the pond. We went four. Gotcha. And so it's a little more money, but it's a lot less headache. So a guesstimation is somewhere between three and four thousand gallons per hour is filtered in this little pond, right. probably somewhere exactly. around in there. Yes. Cool. And so this water turns over. Uh, probably every 15 minutes complete and it's all filtered in that amount of time uh, the thing that's in our little shed over here is the UV filter which I was talking about which is the 500 gallon per hour pump runs right and I will show you that pretty soon all right we've gotten rocks from local, local quarries and piled them up nice currently we have four fish in here some of the problem with the koi they will tend to jump out we have come out and seen them on the ground okay uh, the largest one in here an orange one if he's panning on to that right. jumped out he was able to get out here before he succumbed and got him back in and he's doing fine but sometimes they do that and so there is a, a, a rate of uh, death in these things by uh, jumping out and different things and so right. we, try to keep the walls of this high enough that they don't do that right so we've 
created the rock around there does a lot of different things. It's good for aesthetics, but it's also good for all kinds of other things. Keeps other critters out of here. Right, the, exactly. The waterfall, uh, not only is it filtrated inside of there, coming down over those rocks is right. sort, sort of a clean, cleansing as well. And another thing that I've noticed is you've got quite a bit, you know, later I'll pan out around everything, but you've got quite a bit of different plants too. And plants can help with, uh, you know, filtering out new nitrates and stuff like that and uh exactly and we, we try to keep all kinds of different plants we have two different uh, uh pond lilies right that and that one right there is even flowered yeah. right now it's really pretty right. a real nice yellow flower the other one bloomed earlier this week this one's blooming again when we come out here and set we get excited about those things right uh, the plants here we got a plant up there in the corner that that uh, keeps um, just it's just keeps everything uh, natural. Right, one thing that I will also say is this summer, I've been doing some summer ponds, like some uh, stock tanks outside, and when I keep the water flow going really good, it cuts down on mosquitoes being able to yeah. lay down larvae. I bet you that waterfall helps keep down the mosquitoes. Yeah. Am I right? Or? No, that's exactly right. And I don't know if you can see through the camera, but you can see uh, as we're standing here, this water flowing in a counterclockwise it is. It is. direction. Yep. And because of that, not only is that good for the fish, but it helps the, the mosquito larvae. Right. It keeps that down. Right. The other thing is, is a lot of ponds have a real fishy smell on this to a point, but because of what we have done, uh, the fish smells not as great. Right. And so it's kind of a nice pond smell, which is, to me, relaxing. Definitely. And the hearing of the waterfall, even our neighbors can hear the waterfall right. sometimes. And if they say it kind of relaxes them. Yeah. So running water it is... Uh, it was great and so yeah we love our fish and we love our pond well you want to go over and we'll take a look at this uh, UV sterilizer filter real quick sure all right okay uh, what right. we've done to conceal some of this stuff kind of make it look more natural and we kind of like that is we created a small shed to put our UV filter and supplies in right uh, you can see inside of there this vertical tube is yep. the UV filter. All right. We've got our own power supply to it uh, right. in case of an outage. Got a roof to that. shed the water right. off of exactly. it and everything. And all of our stuff the flow comes into here. We have our extra things stored into here. Yeah. But this UV filter is key. And again, we oversize this thing. Uh, they make them uh, about a third that size and recommend that for this pond size but we like i said overstate everything right and we have found that that has given us a lot of success right and a lot less headaches very awesome very awesome all right so over here is we're at the back of the waterfall here and he's got a really beautiful setup here and uh, he's, uh, Rich is going to go ahead and talk about what he goes through. Now he's got, not going to do it because it's a little bit of a job to get to it, but he's got some filtration down in here and I'm going to let him talk about that. Okay. What we've done is run, run from a pump an inch and a half a PVC flexible pipe up into a container, a specifically designed container for water waterfalls that comes in through the bottom filters up through the top. And for maintenance, especially in the spring, we have to take that out and sometimes even through the summer. As we peel this surface off here, we pull that out and we clean all of the debris out of that. And uh, we just simply, uh, uh, we leave the, the waterfall in place and we, we can uh, pull out, it's contained within a bag, right. a net bag, so that the rocks are contained so that we can pull them out and rinse them off right. uh, through the hose and everything. So that's what we do for maintenance. We'll pull this top off at least once a year and pull that out. and clean that up and siphon the water out of the bottom of that will shut everything off temporarily and clean that up and so when we do that it revives everything it keeps everything clean and flowing uh, oftentimes if you leave it too long and you get a summer like this where there's a lot of algae and things it builds up a lot and so we'll probably clean up about August we could usually do this and pull the fish inside long middle of, uh, middle of November Gotcha. And so uh, we, we keep all of this. It does have one large slab that's fairly easy once we get the plants off. Uh, it's probably a 75 pound slab. It keeps the critters out of there and any anything that would go in there. Oftentimes we have deer in here so we try to keep them from plundering around and uh, and knocking things over so they'd like to probably get into, into some of those things and for water or whatever. For ri Rich, for someone that's uh, thinking about setting up one of these. I know you talked about 
uh, taking it down and stuff. And then um, let's talk a little bit about what, you know, you bring your fish in in the winter time because, you know, here in Iowa, your pond isn't really the deepest in the world, so you have to. Um, what do you look for for signs in the spring to open this pond back up? A lot of times in the spring we'll have frogs come out. Now they, we don't drain the pond down; it ices up in the winter time. Frogs sometimes will will bury down low, and what we start hearing is these frogs croaking. It's long in about early March. This year it was a little later than that. Right. And so then we know that the temperature then becomes above uh, 50 degrees at night, and we'll come out and refill the pond. And uh, the thing with uh, taking the fish in, one, one quick note is in the winter time, you don't want to overfeed them because they, they, they will kill them. Right. And so the, when we bring them out in the spring, we gingerly feed them very, at first very small amounts. And so they get acclimated to, to that. And so we'll bring them out early in the morning so we have the daylight sunshine to, to warm by. And from then on, uh, it's easy going. Awesome. Well, I really, really appreciate you letting me come out here. You've got more than what you was letting on like you do, and it's a really nice setup, and it just goes to show that um, you keep on until you get it right, and then once you get it dialed in and get it right, it will just keep on going, and you just have to do the maintenance. You know, it's a little bit of hard work, but you've really got a nice setup here, and I really appreciate you letting me come out. Uh, thanks for coming out. I, I like sharing what we've got and, and helping people out. To, uh, to, you know, avoid the stumbling blocks that we ran into earlier. Right. We had no one to show us. Right. Uh, we just experimented, but hopefully this will help. And uh, if there's any questions, you can ask the yeah. Jeff, and he'll be glad to instruct you uh, further details. Sounds good. Thanks. So, what do you guys think? I am so stoked about this video. When I first reached out to Rich, um, it was because of a Facebook post. He just put a simple little, I don't even think it was a video, I think it was just a picture of his little koi pond. And I reached out to him and asked him if I could come out and take a look at it and maybe shoot a video. And he didn't think that it would make much of a video. And whenever I got there and started hearing him talk about everything, I knew right away that it would make a pretty decent little video. Um, they've had that pond set up for over 20 years and I'm really, really thankful that he allowed me to come out and uh, film it for you guys and uh, bring you guys a short little video about a koi pond. So I just want to say thanks to Rich for letting me come out and uh, film your koi pond. It was really a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. If it is your first time stopping by my channel, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit that post notification bell so you don't miss out on any one of my videos. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday, and I also live stream every Wednesday and Saturday night. Thanks for coming along on this video. Hopefully you enjoy. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, y'all.